So you want to swap an old ceiling light like this one for some fancy new down lights. But you've got no access above the ceiling to do your wiring. Maybe it's a flat roof above or maybe there's flooring in the way such as tiles in a bathroom so that you can't get the floor up to gain access to the wiring. Let's not let that beat us today. I'm going to be showing you guys a little technique so that you can see how to install down lights when there's no access above the ceiling. So it's been nearly two years since I last did a downlight video showing you guys the easiest way to install downlights. And that video did really, really well with nearly 300,000 views so far. But loads of you asked, well, I can't gain access in a loft space above or a ceiling space above to do my wiring. So what do I do? Well, this is where this video comes in. Think of it as a bit of a continuation from the last video. If you want to watch the last video, the link will pop up here and it will be at the end of this one. Okay, first step of the process. Let's decide where we want the down lights to go. Now, I'm going to have nine in here. That is going to be one, two, three rows of three in a square pattern. But what I don't want to do is go cutting in a hole for those down lights before I know where the joists are above because above the ceiling there's going to be joists and if we go drilling holes we might hit one and if we hit one there's more ceiling repair work to do. So let's have a look and see where the joists are. The quickest and easiest way to find the joists in the ceiling is to use one of these. This is called a stud buddy. They're very cheap, very effective. Basically what they do is they find the nails or screws in the plasterboard that attach the plasterboard to the joist. Once you find a screw, there's one there, it sticks to it and you can then use a pencil to mark where the joist is. But I'm actually going to use a sharpie because this ceiling is going to be getting skimmed over anyway so I'm not too worried about making a mess of it. I think, there you go, there's another one right there. We just make a little mark there. You'll probably find that your joists are going to be around 420 to 450 centers. So exactly 420. So the joists are running in that direction. Right, so we'll work our way along the room and mark all the joists. If I measure 420 from that mark there. So let's check that with the stud buddy. And sure enough, look, there's a joist right there. Right, so we've got a series of marks now along the ceiling and we know where each joist is because they are going to be our biggest enemy when we've got no access above. We need to get the cable through those joists. So now we know where the joists are, the next thing we're going to do is plan where our spotlights are going to go in relation to the joists so that we've got a good plan in our head where our wiring needs to go. Now the way you need to do this is to use a tape measure and simple maths and measuring to work out where you want those spotlights. Of course the amount of spotlights that you need for your room depends on the size of the room but you always want to make sure that there's no dark spots or areas where there'll be shadows created within the room. The existing ceiling light in here is right in the middle of the room. So that's 215 from that wall, 215 from that wall. So this will be one of our down lights here and I'll be creating a parallel line off that light there so that I know where my first row is going to go. So that's 173 from that wall. And what I want to do now is make a line at 173 along the ceiling. So I'll mark 1730 on the ceiling just there. If you have a laser level like this, it's really useful to run a line along the ceiling. If you don't have a laser level, you can use a nice long level like this to run a line along the ceiling to create nice parallel lines so that you can mark out where these spotlights are going to go. If you don't make the lines parallel and all the spotlights are kind of all over the place, it'll look a bit daft when you walk into the room. So mark out the rest of your ceiling, stick across where each down light's going to go, make sure they all look square and that you're happy with the locations and make sure they don't land on any of the joists that you marked out earlier. So we're now going to use a hole saw to cut out the holes for the down lights. Now I'm using the quick wire down lights, they're IP rated down lights, they're a really good product and they're really quick to use, clues in the name really. They're really innovative, easy to wire up. Um, I'll show you how to wire them up in a bit. But they require a hole 70 millimeters in diameter, so I'll use a 70 mil hole saw. Uh, what I would say is make sure you use a mask when you're cutting the holes or a dust collector if you have one. Used to have one, but it's gone walkies. So we're just gonna use a mask to make sure we don't breathe all this dust in. So now go around and cut all those down light holes that you've marked out. 
and all of these little sections that you cut out, make sure you keep them because you're going to need them later on in the process. Now in this next section of the video we're going to get into the juicy stuff, the thing that you really came for, how to get the wiring through the joists to each of the downlights, that's the tricky bit right? Now I do need to stress before you undertake this next section of the video, do make sure that you isolate the circuit that you're working on and that you test for dead to make sure that that circuit is actually dead and also if you're not confident or competent to undertake electrical work like this then do give an electrician a call but if you are going to be giving this a go the next thing to do head to the consumer unit or fuse board and turn off the power so that we can work on the circuit because what we're going to do next is take down the old ceiling light. What you will find is that all your lights are going to be different. You might have a pendant with a ceiling rose or you might have a light fixture like this one. So we'll whip this light down now and see what we've got inside. Probably been up here some years. Okay so wow what we got here. Don't copy any of this because this is not how you wire up a, um, a ceiling light. If you want to see how to wire up a ceiling light properly, I've got plenty of videos on the channel that will help you do that. So they have just, by the looks of it, wrapped the CPC around a screw on the bracket. So we'll check for dead now before we go taking the rest of these wires out. These are the old wiring colours, so red for live, black for neutral. There's also another error here. One of these will be a switched live. That'll be this one here. And there is no sleeving on that neutral wire to indicate that it's a switched live. So I've proven that it's dead with a proven unit and voltage tester. So drop your old light out of the way and we've now got something that we can work with. I've pushed those wires up into the ceiling and I can now drill my last hole for the centre spotlight. I just make sure that your cables are a little bit out of the way so that you don't nick them when you go drilling through here. I'll be showing you how to connect all that up to your downlights a bit later in the video. We've got the holes drilled for the downlights. What we now need to do is next to each joist along that middle row, we need to drill another hole so that we can get a spade bit at an angle and drill through each of those joists. So we're working on the centre row because we only need to make holes through the joists along the centre. Where there is space between the joists, we can feed cables out along with our cable rods so that's no big problem. What we do need to do is make sure that the marks where we think our joists are, so you can see there's a mark here, is actually where those joists are so that we know where to drill. So grab a cable rod, put that in the hole until you hit the joist. So that's hit the joist now and to the edge of that hole it's that long and that is exactly where our mark is. So we know that that joist is indeed there. So we can now put a hole next to that mark. Now I did catch the joist a little bit, but there's still plenty of room to get a spade bit up at an angle and give us enough clearance to get a hole through that joist. Now repeat that, make a hole next to each joist along the center row. What we now need to do is make holes in the joists so that the cables can be fed through. But how do I know there's no cables or pipes on the other side of that joist? Because commonly cables will be clipped to a joist. If I go drilling through there and there's a cable there, I'm going to hit it. So what I like to do is get my inspection camera in there first and check the back of the joist. This is the Ferret Pro. I can see what's in there on my phone and I can check to see if there's anything on the back of the joist. So we can drill through the joists now. You'll want at least a 20 or 22 mil spade bit to pass your one mil twin and earth through. And what we want to do is get that at as much of an angle as we can. Ideally, you want that to be about 50 mil up from the surface because otherwise, if somebody screws something up to this joist, they could hit your cable. So try and get that hole as high up as you can. Now we'll repeat that along each joist so that we've got access all the way along the middle of the room to pass the cables through the joists. Right, so we'll get on with feeding the first downlights. For this you're going to want some 1 mil twin and earth or 1.5 mil twin and earth. Both will do the job for this. We're going to start from where the cables from the light switch and the loop in come out of the middle of the ceiling. 
pull off enough cable to feed your first spotlight, which will be the one right over in the far corner there. And we'll start pulling that cable through the joist with our cable rods. And then we get, and then once we get between those two joists in line with that down light over there, we can quite easily feed it through with the cable rods to that hole for the down light. So all it is really is starting to feed lots of cable in now to daisy chain all these together. Um, and then at the end we just wire them all up. So, let's get on with it, let's pull some cable through. And to make this easier, once you've got the rod up into the ceiling, you can get your hands up there to actually guide it. If you've got bigger hands than I have, then go with a bigger hole than a 70mm hole, maybe 100mm, as long as you don't drill that 100mm hole for your actual downlights, because they require a 70mm hole, the cutouts next to each joist can actually be a little bit bigger, so that doesn't really matter. So I'll extend my rod, I'm through to my last down light now, so we can now feed cables through to all three of those end down lights and back to where the feed is. Now I'm not going to stand there and say that this is easy. It is a little bit tricky sometimes, but if it's your only option, then it's well worth doing. So persevere and you can get through those joists. So we should be able to feed cable rods just along through these joists now to, um, to grab hold of that cable and pull it all the way through. To attach the cable to the rod, I usually just tape them on. A bit of insulation tape. Take hold of the rod, just pull a load of cable through now. There you go, there's the other end of that cable. Then we just repeat that for all of the lights, daisy chain them all together. That is all the cables fed in. Let me show you briefly what we've got now before we move on to the next step. The feed will come into a junction box above the first down light which is there. Then it comes to the second down light and it just daisy chains from there to that one, to that one, back through to that one, then all the way across again to that one, and then this row here is last. So that's the cables in. If you've been following along, you should have two tails now hanging out at the end of each of your down light holes, apart from your last one on the chain, which should just have one hanging out. So if it looks something like that, you're getting there. Now we'll move on to connecting this all up. Where our old ceiling light was, that's where our first spotlight's gonna go, and above that is gonna be a junction box. Now for this I'll be using this quick wire switch and load. It's a maintenance free junction box and they're really easy to use. Let me show you how to wire this up. So I've marked up the cables that I took from the ceiling light and we've got our switch cable there. That has a permanent live going down to the switch and then a switched live coming back. This cable here is loop in, so I've labeled that loop in. Essentially that's the power coming into the room from either the consumer unit or the last room on the circuit. This is the last room, so we don't need to worry about a loop out that would normally go to another room. So you may have another cable that would be the loop out. Um, this cable here is the cable that I've just put in going to our first down light, and I've written DL on that. So we'll strip these back now and then install them into the junction box. The quick wire strippers are handy for this because they have 22 mil actually marked on them. So if we take this down light cable, for example, we can put that in all the way to 22 mil and it will strip the exact length of cable that we need. And then we need to strip a further 15 mil so that we expose the conductors like that. We'll do that for the switch cable and the loop in as well and then we'll insert them into the junction box. If you don't have the quick wire strippers, other wire strippers will do the job. But of course, you do need to measure to make sure you strip the required amount. Right, so if we look at the little quick wire switch and load junction box, what you'll see on here is you've got neutral and live, neutral and live. That's for power coming into the room and going out. So it's loop in, loop out. So taking hold of the loop in, what you'll see is you've got your red conductor and black conductor. These are the old wiring colors, so red is live, black is neutral. If you've got the new colors, there'll be a chart on the screen, but it'll be brown for live and it'll be blue for neutral. Put the neutral in the neutral side, live in the live side and earth in the middle. Push the cable in part of the way and then push it in all the way until it clicks. You'll hear an audible click 
and that is now in. So that is our loop in in the power side. If you've got loop out, put it in the other side here and that will feed your next room. Now if we look at the other end here, it's indicated switch. It's got an L for live, an LS which is live switched or switched live and uh, CPC and earth in the middle. It's a little bit tricky because we don't have a huge amount of cable to play with here. So we'll connect that switch wire now into the switch side. Make sure the switch live goes in the LS terminal, the live goes in the live, and the CPC or earth goes into the CPC and earth terminal. Give it a nice push and you hear it click. Now we've got the cable that goes off to our first down light and will subsequently feed all of the other down lights. And that will go into the load side. Because this is new cable, this is the newer colors. Make sure you get those in to the correct terminals. So that junction box can now be left up in the ceiling. So yeah, I think these are a real quick, neat little design and I'm more than happy to recommend them to you. Right. Let's connect up some downlights. So quick wire downlights. Well, first thing you need to know is that you don't need this bit yet. All we need to wire up is the connector and then at the end of the job we just go along and plug in our downlight and push it up in the hull. So that saves us from having to hold a downlight there and wire the whole thing up all in one go, which is really handy. It works in exactly the same way as the switch and load junction box. We just connect the T connector onto the two cables for the downlight, one if it's the last one in your loop, and then we connect the downlight to it, it's really simple. The measurements are the same as before, and on the T connector, on both sides you've got the same thing. You've got live, neutral, and CPC or earth, so that is the same on both sides, and that's one cable coming into the downlight, and one cable going out to the next downlight, really simple. Again, make sure you match up the colors correctly for live, neutral, and earth. Push that in all the way till you hear it click. So we just do exactly the same on that one. And that is it, amazingly simple. And now all we need to do is plug the down light into that connector, and then we just pop that down light into the hole. So I'll be putting a link to the quick wire products that you've seen in this video down below in the description. I definitely recommend them. They're very quick and very easy for you guys to use. So definitely go and check them out if you're doing this job. So now I've got the first one in, I'm just gonna whip round and connect up all the rest of these down lights. So as I connect up the last few down lights, there's a couple of points to make. First thing is, if there's any insulation in the ceiling, I spoke to quick wire and they said that you can simply push the insulation out of the way and make sure there's a 30 mil gap between any insulation and their down lights. That's what they recommend. They don't directly recommend that you leave insulation on the top of these. So that's just one thing that you need to consider. What other things would I take away from this job? Getting through the joists is not too much of a problem. It is a little bit tricky and if I did change anything it would be not to be lazy and these middle holes that you drill next to the joist probably go with 100 mil. Gives you a little bit more access especially if you've got big hands and that way you can get your hands up in there a little bit easier to grab hold of the cables. Just this last one to do now, then we're gonna give this all a test and I'm gonna show you quickly how to fill those big holes. Uh, before we do that, hit like, because that helps the video reach and help more people, and hit subscribe as well, because you don't wanna miss out on all the great videos that I've got coming up and there's loads planned. So they're all in, it's test time, let's hit the switch. So there you go, we didn't let something like a simple lack of access above stop us. The spotlights are in. Now, we've just got these big holes that we use to drill the joists and get our hands up and feed the wires in. We've just got them to fill now, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do next. So we can either get the sealant plastered all patched up, and this'll look bang on. So to fill these holes, just grab the plugs that you drilled out of them, and a small piece of timber to go into the hole. I'll put a little pilot hole right in the middle of that piece of timber. Grab a drywall screw and just put that in by hand. Now pop that bit of timber up into the hole. You can use that screw to maneuver it into the position that you want. Hold the screw so the piece of wood doesn't move. Drill a couple of little pilot holes. Either side. They just stop that timber splitting on the ends. And now use drywall screws to hold that timber in place. 
Now you can undo that middle screw. Grab the plug that you took out of the hole originally. Start off a couple of drywall screws in there. Pop that over the piece of timber and you can just screw it in place. And that's no plugged. You can even now put some filler over the top of that, sand it down and make it good. Or skim the ceiling like I am to get the best finish possible. So there you go guys. If you want to install down lights but you've got no access above, don't let that stand in your way because it doesn't have to stop you. Click on this playlist if you want to see more about the wiring because there's loads more to learn. And click on this video if you want to see how I install spotlights in a ceiling when you do have access above. And I'll see you guys in the next one.